All right, so let's have a look up the front here. Uh, because I've got the new stone guard, I've lost my stone guard rubbish bag. I've just chucked it in here, okay? We've talked about big storage on the walk up, okay? 3,000 litres, and out of that, you've got space for four jerry cans, okay? Again, you're traveling, you're touring, it's important to have space. And jerry cans for water or fuel is really important. We've got space for two jerry cans here, two there. Um, now, now, I'm putting my rubbish bag in there, which is a good handy space. Got a really big storage box on the front. Okay, heaps of room. I've got my power cord bag there. All my bits and pieces. Portable toilet. Okay, fits nice in there. We've got a big storage box, as you can see. Lots of room. Here's our chargers, okay. Charger there on a clear top. I've got a little battery pack and my key to drill. In case we want to drill some holes out or do repairs. We've got a nice little kit there. All right. We've got our solar. All right, now this is the power hub in here. We've only got the single lithium. I can fit a double lithium in there, no worries. We're going to put another one in soon because of the new equipment we've got. We'll show you soon. We've got the TVMS from Red Arc, brilliant system, and uh, a Safari lithium battery in the front there. So it's particularly in your drawbar. We used to always do twin AGM for the fridge, 66 kilos right here on the drawbar. Uh, you can now get rid of all that weight. You've got more space. Uh, you got your BMS in there as well. Thing is too, as you can see, if I want to get that battery out, I can lift it out in five minutes, two minutes even. It's very accessible. Things like your battery, your TVMS, your BMS, you know, it's very important to have that accessible and you can see how accessible that is. I can access that less than a minute. If I want to, you know, hook up some more wires myself, want to run some more solar in, you've got to be able to access your BMS. We can do that really easily. So that's a little electric station there. Got a nice little board. Goes on top, all right? Easy to get into. And we've also created some more storage on top there that you can uh, utilize as well. So that box, I've got a ton of room in there. Got a little dunny shovel here. Great little shovel for whatever. Little stainless steel shovel fits there. Heaps of room. All right, so we might as well set up the tent. First thing to do is to release the ensuite. Okay, ensuite is one of the best fitted kits we've got. We sell so many of those things, and uh, that's just uh, ready to set up there. Even though I've got the new stone gate on, we'll show you what that is in a minute. You can see a little bit less room, but I can still get up and down. All right, it's such a joy to use this setup. Now we don't need to. Uh, with the walk-up design, as you know, we pioneered this system. There's no ladder, and uh, it's effortless to get up and down inside there. All right. There's our rooftop tent, queen size, 190 mil mattress, and we'll set that up for you. Nice to have this little platform, a toolbox to stand on. All right, so all you got to do, get your two eyelets hooked over. Now it'd be a lot easier to do what everyone else has done and just have a have a very small annex on the front here. All right, but we know what's important is to have. A big covered area over your walkway. Okay, nothing worse than trying to get in and out of bed. And we've done this with the alley cover we had. It's raining, and you just got uh, you're getting wet every time you get up and down the ladder. Look at that.
Yeah, so big awning. Now this is all 12 ounce canvas as well. Okay, a lot of rift up tents. Will be uh, six, eight, even four ounce canvas. But uh, the thicker canvas is much better. It's warmer and cooler. Cooler in summer, warmer in winter. And uh, a lot tougher, so like that. That's the quickest, easiest setup camper on the market. And we can be straight into bed there. I've got these lockout poles, okay. And uh, what we can do with those, I've noticed some people a little bit. You know, say not, maybe not claustrophobic, but worried that you know a branch might come down or this can come on top of you. So these are poles that are riveted; they can't collapse, and you don't need them. But if you're worried about it, these are lightweight aluminium poles. These can clip on here. There, Clay. Heaps of room. The biggest thing with this is that big queen size 200 mil mattress. Right, heaps of room, nice storage. You've got storage pockets. You got a fan. You got lights. You've got a headboard down the end there, and you can get in and out of this without worrying about a ladder. So, it's our camp. What about the ensuite? I might chuck that up. Show you the new water set up. These on suites are brilliant. Okay. You don't have to have these three stage poles, they come separately, but it is better to use them. And one of the reasons is when the wind's blowing, okay, you can tie this on like this, and it just stops your uh, ensuite flapping around all over the place. They have a quite light material. So just by doing that, you can peg down that peg there, the pole, and there's your ensuite. I'll carry two of those mats. One goes there, one goes inside. And now this is a new plumbing setup, what we've got. We've changed it a little bit to what it was. So, I'll show you that, how it works. Look in there. Okay, here's a pump mounted inside, we've shown that before. This is from the pump. This is uh, from the shower and to the, to the uh, from the hot water joker and then back to the shower head. Here's the two uh, tanks, front and back. You can select them individually. And uh, with the way these uh, Three stage dials are set, and we're going to suck from the tanks. If we uh, turn that one and this one on, we're going to be able to suck from an external source, so that's really important as well. So, we can use suck from jerry can or from the creek. So, I'll quickly set that up and show you how easy it is to get the joker working. Right, so we've got a gas on there. Lock that door. We can turn our gas on. We've got our water from the pump to the joker. We can turn that on. We've got our water from the joker. 
into here. All right, so that's plumbing up the system now. And then we can go from there, we'll turn those on. All right. That's now ready to go. So, gas is on. I'll turn the pump on. All right. Okay, so I've turned the pump on and uh, I've got my two dials here on. So we've got uh, water coming to the joker back into our system. That's split two ways. One goes to the shower and one goes back to the kitchen. They're all on, tanks are on, pumps on. Just a matter now turning this on. Look at that. 38 degrees, 39. You can jump in there now, have a nice shower. Look at that, it's so good. That is perfect temperature water. 41 degrees, we can adjust it here. And with the jokers, all right, you'll find probably about three quarters on the flame. And if you go too low on the pump, it's not quite enough water for the pump, right? So we're going to turn it up a little bit. We don't want to go too fast water because it's going to cycle through too quickly and not get hot enough. All right, so we're just going to go about, there's low, just down enough so that the pump's running well. Okay, and that's perfect. If you have the, you don't want the pump going flat out, all right, because then you're just going to waste too much water. You've only got limited water. We've got two tanks, 80 litres each, 106 litres, plus up to four jerry cans. You've got heaps of water, and you can very easily select them. Now, on the old dots, you used to have to crawl underneath or reach underneath to switch between tanks, things like that. Very important, this is all accessible here. You can see how easy that is to get to. Now, the pump is right there, okay? Pumps are something that you can have problems with. It's just the nature of them. You might get a bit of uh, stuff in your tank, which happens. Comes through, blocks up the diaphragm. You've got... Uh, you know, pressure diaphragm in the pump that can have problems with. You can get um, blockages, all sorts of things. Pumps are something that they, they can leak, your fittings can come loose. Very important that you get good access and it's right there. Um, you know, we pressure test these. The last thing we do before we uh, weigh, take the trial to the weigh bridge, uh, all the systems in, we'll fill all the tanks up and pressure test the system. Now every now and then you do get a leak and we'll fix it up or tighten something but the key is that it's also easy to access. And not only for us, if you've got a problem with your pump, you can get to it very easily. It's very important. So this is a brilliant move for us. We had some help to uh, organize this setup from a very clever plumber. And you can see that the, the uh, pump in this section with all this diaphragm and the plumbing is just a brilliant system. You know, it's taken away from the pump box at the back, allowed us to have the charcoal box, all that in there together. It's an awesome system, very accessible as well. So that's our new plumbing system. All right, so we have in the ensuite. These are South African made product. We sell so many of these. They're a brilliant concept. You can see how quick it is to set up. Having a quick setup ensuite, very important, because that's not just your change room. That's your shower, cubicle. That's your portable toilet area. So you can put, you can put your portable toilet in there. You can change in there. We've got the hood goes over the top. We've shown you that before, so nice hood. And uh, it's in a perfect spot, you know, a little bit away from the trailer. You've got the light on there as well. Yeah, it's a great setup. So, let's have a quick break and then we'll show you what's on the front of the trailer. All right, we should have a beer. Got a mate of mine, Tony. We're going to stay with him tonight, actually. Tony and his son, Sam. And they live over Bluey, so they've been out checking the pots and uh, hopefully got some blue swimmers for tonight. Hey, guys. How's it going? It's pretty shallow here. It's pretty good here, Tony.
good, good, good. How are you? See ya, see ya. How are you, buddy? See you. Yeah. Yeah. Right, that's all cut off. Yeah. So just one blue? Just one, sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we, um, now, eh? uh, I don't think I don't know if we've been raided. I just don't think we were in the right spot. Line, yeah. line was no, no, line was perfect. Okay. Yeah, line was perfect. So uh, anyway, yeah. next time. One of the other things we'll show you with these two batteries, this Safari Lithium Smart Battery, is it's got an app here. Okay, so you just download the Safari app. You got two batteries. All right, and uh, with those. You can see exactly what it's doing. Okay, 88%. Now if we charge, uh, if we plug something in, we can see that operating. Now that's this uh, battery here. All right, so there's nothing going in and out, and it's at 88%. It's got all stats: the voltage, the current, temperature. As you can see, nothing happening. We go back and we select the other battery. So on there, we've got to, we've got to name these. All right, that's on the trailer. We should see some uh, power go out. There you go, three amps. Let it settle. Now all that's running at the moment is those two LED lights. You can have a look there. Right, so I'll turn the fridge on, and you'll see the fridge will cut in now. There it goes. That should be drawing four amps or something. All right, it's just starting to get going now. So yellow is your. Uh, Amps going out, and you've got that on your phone to show exactly what it's doing. So you've got the app on your phone, smart battery. It's a built-in BMS. So we've got the TVMS, which is a battery management system, shows you everything what's going in and out, the current draw. But with these smart batteries, if you've got that as an isolated battery, it's basically a built-in BMS all on its own. So very clever batteries. A couple of things here I wanted to show you while we're here. quickly. Here's our new cooler bags. So that is perfect size for a uh, lunch box if you're going working the mines, working wherever. These are insulated cooler bags. Okay, it's got uh, 10 mil foam cell size insulation all the way around. And the big thing with these is it's got a waterproof PVC liner. So you know if you've got ice in there or an ice brick, okay it's going to get water in there. You need to clean it. You can take this out when you get home and wash it. And it's not going to get ice or water or dirty water, you know, down inside the canvas. So, uh, we designed that when I was in New Zealand at Christmas time. Had a good mate, Johnny Gowing. We're at his place and we're talking. He loves his bags, and we designed this. I mean, it always looks so simple, but nobody's nobody's done that before, as far as I know. A removable PVC liner as a soft cooler bag. So perfect lunch bag size with a zip on the front. Waterproof zip, insulated. That's your uh, lunch bag size. This is the next size up. All right. And uh, again, we've got a PV removable PVC liner. And if you take that out, got some handles, you can go and wash it when you get home. Perfect fishing bag. And uh, look at that. I've got some uh, tall in the Barclay oysters. Got some oysters here on Wallace Lake. So I'm going to Tony's place, the guys. Just called into the tinny, so we're going there for dinner tonight. Got some crabs and uh, have a nice evening. I'll stay there tonight. But that's the you know the ideal thing. Um, soft cooler bag, insulated, removable, uh, waterproof liner. And the other thing I've got is these here. Okay, look at that. These are uh, woolen blanket. What, made by Waverley Mills in Tasmania. Beautiful uh, blankets, Australian merino wool, very soft. They're 70% pure wool and they're 30% recycled wool. Yeah, it's a big uh, woolen mill in Tasmania. They weave all sorts of materials and some of the uh, offcuts that uh, they pick up are, are, are cleaned and washed and run back through as recycled. So it's a pretty good price for the blanket, 30% recycled from the factory, so it's clean material. And look at that. Have a look at that little tag there. I love this. Weaving luxury since 1874. Made in Tasmania. They're in Launceston. We come across these. I gave my mate Johnny Gowing, who helped me design these bags here. A friend of his owns a company. I gave him a ring. You know, it's right up our alley. We're doing the swags. And nothing I like more than a good quality woolen blanket. 
and nothing I love more than a Australian made one and look at that so what I've done is I've, I've resized them to fit our swags okay because these are basically made for our swags but it's perfect for the camping trailer you know and uh, I've made this orange or red um, blanket stitch around the outside which matches the colors of our swags so you can get a single or a double the sizes are on the website and um, you might have a sleeping bag but if anywhere you go often you need an extra blanket and this is the ideal thing we've got the uh, leather straps so you can roll it up and have some leather straps to hold it which is really nice so they're on the website shortly and just wanted to quickly show you those so the next big thing is uh, our stone guard here okay you can see it's just a canvas bag all right pull this off a bit of fun making this I can tell you and that is a the Ubco electric motorbike so again my mate Johnny Gowing become a good friend of mine and uh, he's uh, become a really good resource for a lot of innovative products we made this little stone gut up with that. we made this little uh, bike rack this electric motorbike is only 50 kilograms okay see that now all you gotta do is straighten the handlebars up right. Tighten that, a couple of turns. Done. We're using these uh, turnbuckles, and works really good. Fun, did it? Okay, a couple of turns. All right. So, 50 kilos. Now, we used to have two AGM batteries in here before we got into the lithium. That was 70 kilos, almost 70 kilos on the drawbar. Taken them out, I put a single lithium in. And the difference is the weight of this motorbike. So if you've got a dual battery in the front of your trailer, convert to lithium, you're not going to have any more weight than what this motorbike is. I mean, an average motorbike's, you know, 200 kilos. It's really too heavy to put on the drawbar. And you can do, we've done it before. A few people have them, but it's just, it is really too heavy uh, on the drawbar of uh, your camping trailer. Okay, it's 50 kilos, take the battery out, it's only about 35 kilos. So this has got, uh, it's a New, New Zealand company, Ubco, uh, 40 amp hour battery, and uh, it's a two wheel drive electric motorbike. Okay, so there's no paddles, as you can see, it's not a, it's not a bicycle. It's not an electric bicycle, it's an electric motorbike. It's got dual wheels, dual drive front and back, which makes it really good for getting around the bush, and it's totally silent. Um, really good suspension, step through, great racks front and back. And uh, the big question everybody has is how far is it going to go? What's the range? And uh, what's it gonna, how's it going to ride now? Uh, the stats are on the website, we can show you all those, but basically doing 40 k's an hour, an 80 kilo bloke, you'll do over 100 kilometers range. Okay, so, you know, um, that's going to vary, the heavier you are, the lighter you are. Somebody like me, 68 kilos, I'm going to be able to go further, and it depends on, on the range. But an average terrain, average speed, you're going to get around 100, ki 100 uh, kilometers range. So, you know, nobody needs to do that. It's not something you're going to commute to work and back every day. But this is a bike that you can put on the front of your camping trailer or in the back of your van, in your van, full electric. And uh, the idea with this is with our big solar, 300 watt solar, the next camping trailer I'm going to have 420 watt solar, our lithium, you can charge this. This is powered by the sun. 
Right, you don't need to take fuel, oil, or mixed fuel. Same with the chainsaw. And uh, you know, what's better than that when you're camping, something like this, you want to go fishing, you want to go to the shops, you want to do anything you like, you can uh, putt around on your bike. The top speed is about 50 k's an hour. It's perfect for just putting around in the bush. And um, we'll take for a bit of a spin. So yeah, I saw these in New Zealand. The mate's place uh, Christmas time, we came back. It took us a while to get organised and get onto them. And we're now the dealers in Gloucester for these bikes, Yubco bikes. And uh, they're just so impressive, a brilliant little thing. This is the future. You know, I can road register this, so my new one, this is my friend's bike, Johnny's, but um, i got a new one coming, somewhere here in a couple of days, and it'll be road registerable. So you can ride downtown. I mean, 50 k's an hour, the speed limit in most built-up areas is 50 k's anyway. And uh, it's for short trips, poking around the bush, go hunting, it's a silent bike. And uh, I think it's brilliant. So when you're camping, unload it, and you can just um, explore around. I mean, that's what you do when you're camping, exploring around. Drive down the beach, you can do anything you like, throw some fishing rods or a rifle over your shoulder, just have some fun with it. I mean, it's a great little bike and very lightweight. Um, so, now if you haven't got a bike license, if it's on private property, it doesn't matter. You don't need road registered, but you may as well get the road registered version. And if you haven't got your license, you go to the RTA, answer 20 questions, get your L's. I mean, then you can legally ride it, it's easy. So, turn him on. Now where you go. It's got great um you know, because it's front wheel drive and rear wheel drive together, you can take, and it's so light, you can take it literally anywhere. If you're going to learn to ride a bike, this is perfect because it's just, yeah, so easy to use, not too tall, and, uh, well, that beautiful little bike. I think they're going to be a great little machine and uh, you know, I can't wait to get this out camping. You know, where we go in the Barrington Tops, you know, you could go around looking at horses, you can sneak up on things because it's silent, you know. You can go and have a look for the horses, you can uh, have a look for pigs, you can just silently, you know, ride through the bush. It's, it's beautiful. And um, yeah, I love them. So, Carl's going to jump on and have a bit of a spin. You pretty keen and then um, that'll be about that'll be about it now have a look up here it's probably the thing we haven't shown you quite yet the secret is the big solar okay you can't do any of this without your solar all right this is the latest technology next generation flat solar okay we've got even newer ones to these but that's 300 watts the next one we're going to use is the triple core polycarbonate panels we've shown you and we're going to fit 420 watts on the roof of this and uh, these uh, solar controls wires will be hidden underneath and once you've got your big solar then you can charge all of your all of your gear, your electric motorbike, electric chainsaw and the next thing we're also getting is a three and a half meter tinny with a Minn Kota equivalent 10 horsepower electric motor the motor is going to be mounted on the back of the trailer we can lift that off and we've got everything we need. Never gonna run out of fuel because it's all powered by the sun. Uh, and you can only do that with the big solar and the big lithium batteries. So, right, eh? That's what we're doing.
Here he comes. He's very steep here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's quite steep down to the lake. Alright. What do you reckon, mate? Oh, it's awesome, mate. It's so light, uh, this thing. It's only 50 kilos, uh, ready to go. Batteries in it and everything. Like a normal dirt bike, it's around 100 to 115 kilos within that range. Uh, that's wet weight. So uh, yeah, it's really light and maneuverable off-road, and um, yeah, plenty of power in it. I mean, uh, you can't spin wheels on this. Like, you got uh, the power front and rear, so um, yeah, it just wants to lock up with the grip, and um, no, nah, it's really good. You got your headlight in the front too. Another thing I like about it is the turning circle. I mean, you don't have the um, the triple clamp forks like a dirt bike does, so your turning circle is complete 180 degrees like that. Uh, nice suspension on it. Got a nice uh, smooth ride. You got a good comfortable seat too. And uh, nice wide foot pegs if you want to stand up as well, which um, when you're climbing those, it's a fairly steep hill up there. And um, no wheel spin at all, just you can feel the front pulling you up, back's helping it along. And um, yeah, awesome. Great what, that you can bring it along. What's the, uh, uh, what do you reckon like if you're camping? Yeah. You know, you just putt around and explore well, I was just a bit. then, like if you've got walking tracks, a lot of camping spots got walking tracks, they've got lookouts, that sort of thing. It might be a 5k walk and it's 6 in the afternoon, you don't really want to walk 5k up there, it might take you a couple of hours, I mean you can just whip up there on this thing, so easy. And um, yeah, no noise, I mean if you're in a caravan park or a uh, campsite where there's a few people around, uh, you can't really make much noise, you know, your generators were bad enough, so a uh, motorbike or anything is too loud to be riding around on, but this is pretty much silent. And um, all your fuel is right up there, you don't have to carry any fuel with you. And um, yeah, no maintenance either, I mean there's, you don't have to oil the chain or clean the air filter or nothing, there's no maintenance on this. It's uh, just all electric, so. So there's your power, you know, powered by the sun. Yeah. Crazy, isn't it? Charge it while you're driving. Um, got your headlight in the front there. It's awesome. And there's really no need, you know, for the power pack we've got. You know, you come home, you can charge up in the afternoon with the sun. Yeah. You've got the power from the batteries to charge as well overnight with the inverter if you want to. And, um, but with, the, I think, you know, most people going out for, say, a long weekend, you're probably not going to need to charge it till you get home, you know. Yeah. And, um, with the range? Oh yeah, they've got plenty of range on them, but um, another thing to note, it's got accessory ports on the front here, so if you're spotlight shooting, that sort of thing at night, um, yeah, you can chuck your, you got your light on the front obviously, but you can chuck an external spotlight in there too, uh, like a light force handheld one, or something like that, and um, yeah, but yeah, this thing's awesome. Oh, this is so great, man. Look, that's a steep hill, eh? Like yeah. this, just not a nothing hill. Look at the look at the camber on that. That's a real steep hill. And uh, I was standing up, but as soon as I sat down, it was easy. You just sit down on it, nice comfy seat, and it just cruises up, no worries, you know. Righto. So I've shown you some of the things on a new walk-up hardtop, and uh, you know we're really converting this trail into a power hub for your electric motorbike, electric chainsaw, and your electric uh, Minn Kota motor for your tinny. So that's what's coming up. You know, we can do that because we've got big solar, 300 watts on there now, we're going to have 420 watts on the next one. Lithium, single at 125 now, we'll have a double lithium on the next one. Um, now on this trailer too, you know, everything you see here basically is standard, uh, except the solar. You can option up for the solar, 300 watts. And uh, all this iron grill table here you can buy off the website. So the kitchen is standard from this section on. Okay, all that section there, the fridge, six litre fridge, and this here is not expensive, you can buy that if you need to as well. We've got the biggest kitchen set up, we've got the biggest awning, 2.5 square back. Standard on these trailers is the airbag Cruise Master suspension. Standard's got the airbag and standard's got also the air tank. Okay, it's really important to have the tank because then you can lift your suspension up and down really quickly, straight up and down. Uh, we've got the big water, okay. 2 8 litre tanks, so 106 litres of water, and we've got up to four jerry cans. Um, we've got the TVMS standard on this setup, we've got the biggest mattress on the biggest rooftop tent available. And uh, if you're cruising around, touring, this is the ideal setup because 
you've got heaps of room, we've got big storage, biggest storage on the market, 3,000 litres of storage, heaps of extra room. Now we don't normally, I wouldn't fill this up normally, but it's great to have that extra space if you've got extra people along. Um, it's really nice to have the extra space. So yeah, you know, big storage, big kitchen, big solar, big lithium. We've got standard airbags, we've got standard air tank, we've got standard TVMS, the big awning, the big rooftop tent and the big mattress. So pretty good setup. And now we're creating this awesome walk up hardtop trailer into a power hub for all your electric toys as well. And uh, that's the future and that's the way we're going. Audio, thanks very much.